Hello everyone, welcome to the Department of Collegiate and Technical Education. It's the 21st session of Unit 2, Artificial Construction Materials Chapter of Subject Construction Materials. This, in this session, we will be learning about the alloys. Before I proceed to this session, we will just have a recap on the last two sessions. That is ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals. In the ferrous metals, we learned the properties and uses of pig iron, cast iron, wrought iron and steel. Two types of steels that is mild steel and high carbon steel. What is this? What is that ferrous metals? Ferrous metals are the metals in which iron is the main constituent. Depending on the iron, there are two types of metals. Ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals. The non-ferrous metals are those metals in which iron is the not main constituent. Isn't it? All these things we have discussed in the last two sessions. In the non-ferrous metals, we have discussed the properties and uh, uses of uh, aluminium, copper, zinc and tin. Oh, and the differences between the ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals. What is this alloys? Coming to this session, alloys. In this uh, session, we will be learning about the alloys, the importance of alloys, types of alloys, properties of the different types of alloys and some applications of alloys. Okay, what is an alloy? An alloy is an intimate mixture of two or more metals. An alloy is an intimate mixture of two or more metals. This is the definition of an alloy. It may be a ferrous metal or non-ferrous metal. There are the two or more metals are combined together to form an alloy. Alloys are the mixed of metals with other metals or non-metal in the same group that are going to be prepared by mixing of the metals in their molten state through the physical processes. That is the definition of an alloy. How the, how the preparation of an alloy takes place? First, the first point is the more infusible metal is first melted in a fire day curricable. First of all, the base metal, whatever is there, you are going to use to prepare an alloy, that is going to be melted. After the melting of that, infuse, that metal, the other metals which are required are added subsequently in order in their infusibility state. The other metals are going to be mixed with the molten metal, melted metal and then the, all the contents are continuously stirred to form a homogeneous mix, homogeneous mass. The base metal and the other metals which are required to prepare a type of alloy are going to be mixed continuously to form a homogeneous form. After the mixing, what you are going to do? The molten mixture, the mixed mixture, the molten mixture is cast in suitable molds and it is allowed to cool. The product so obtained is known as an alloy. Whatever the product you are obtaining after the cooling of the molds, that is an alloy. The, the metal which is present in the alloy is the largest portion in the largest in its largest composition. That metal is known as base metal. And all other metals are known as alloying elements. Hope you have understood the preparation of the procedure which has been followed to prepare an alloy. First of all, the base metal, the important metal, whichever, whatever is there, that is going to be melted. And then the other metals, the alloying elements, the alloying metals are added subsequently into that base metal. And then the, all the metals are continuously stilled to form a homogeneous mass. And that molten mixture is cast into suitable molds and then it is allowed to cool. The product which is obtained from that molds is known as an alloy. Hope you have understood the preparation of an alloy. This is the preparation of an alloy. The next is uh, why we want this alloys? Why alloys are important? Why don't we use ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals itself for the applications of some engineering purposes? Why? This is because alloys provides you to it increases the hardness it gives the hard materials hard components which has very much of high resistance to uh, strength and all and it, it has a good strength the alloys have the alloys gives a good strength to the metal this is the advantage why alloys are important and also alloys prevents the corrosion they are having very much good resistance to corrosion they do not rust 
and also the appearance is good the aesthetic appearance of the metal surface is good when compared to the other ferrous and non ferrous metals that is why we require alloys in our engineering life hope you have understood why the alloys are required understood the definition of alloys and the preparation of alloys and why the alloys are required the next is uh, where are it is going to be used it is going to be used in the military areas military it is having very wide applications wide applications it is in military applications aircraft applications commercials industrial applications and some manufacturing applications all these are the applications of uses of alloys the next is which are the different types of alloys what are the different types of alloys there are three important types of alloys aluminium alloys copper alloys and steel alloys among these three you have only two in your syllabus that is aluminium alloys and steel alloys we will be learning brief uh, we will be learning in detail about this aluminium alloys and steel alloys coming to the first one that is aluminium alloys what is this aluminium alloys the, uh, as i told the aluminium alloy the name itself tells here the base metal is aluminium aluminium alloy is alloyed with many more alloying elements some other alloying elements it may be a copper manganese magnesium silicon nickel all these metals are mixed together to form an alloy which is known as aluminium alloy here the base metal is aluminium so it is named as aluminium alloy hope you understood the definition of aluminium alloy and the next is uh, uh, what are the different types of aluminium alloys you have the main alloys of aluminium there are four different main alloys of aluminium that is uh, duralium y alloy magnesium hydalium these are the four different types of aluminium alloys what are these properties the properties almost are similar to of all these alloys that is they are light in weight as you might have seen this aluminium sheets and all the, the density is less and they are high strength compared to pure aluminium and they are having high ductility high electrical conductivity and high resistance to corrosion these are the common important points properties which you have which it, which occurs in all the forms of aluminium alloys it may be duralium y alloy magnesium hydalium that is their their density is less they are having high resistance to corrosion and high electrical conductivity and high strength coming to one by one, the different types of alloys the composition of each aluminium alloy what is this duralium the duralium consists of the the composition of duralium you might be knowing that the base metal here is aluminium so uh, the other is uh, the about 90% of aluminium is present in this duralium it contains 4% of carbon 0.5% of manganese 0.5% of magnesium 0.5% of iron and 0.5% of silica and the remaining 94% as aluminium this is the composition of duralium coming to its properties as i told almost all the aluminium alloys are having high strength when compared to its pure aluminium or mild steel it is it is it possesses high strength and it has less specific gravity that means it is having it is less weight it is having less density and then it is having high resistance to corrosion and this can take high polish the, uh, the aesthetic appearance of this uh, duralium is good uh, it, these are all the properties of these are all the properties of duralium what are its applications where it is going to be used it is used for pistons aircraft industries automobile industries and also for making electrical cables and its surgical and orthopedic implements or some of the gadgets all these are, are the metals which or these are the materials which can be made with the help of this duralium alloy hope you have understood the properties and applications it is used for make in aircraft industries as a because of its high strength as it is light in weight and high strength it is used in automobile industry also hope you have understood the composition properties and application of duralium next we'll move on to the next one that is y alloy what is this y alloy made of y alloy is also made of in the y alloy the main uh, compose the main base metal is aluminium only it is an aluminium alloy consists of 4% of copper 2% of nickel 1.5% of magnesium and 92.5% of aluminium what are its properties coming to its properties it can be easily machined easily forged easily worked 
and it possesses high strength at elevated temperatures. It has an excellent ability to retain the strength. It has high strength at an high temperatures and it has a good corrosion resistance, corrosive resistance property. It is having ability to resist the corrosion at a greater rate. And then it can be, as I told, it can be easily forged, easily machined, easily worked. These are all the properties of Y alloys. What are its uses? It is used for making, Y alloy is used for making pistons of engines, cylinder heads, gear boxes, propeller braids, and so on. These are all the uses of Y alloys. Hope you have understood the composition properties and application of Y alloy and deuterium. The next one, the next aluminium alloy is magnesium. What is this magnesium? Magnesium is an also is also an aluminium alloy with 5% of magnesium and 95% of aluminium. Yes, what are coming to its properties? It is having, as I told, almost all the aluminium alloys are having greater strength and they are having high corrosive resistance and they are having less density. They are light in weight, you can say. Yes, if it, if the magnesium is present in a small quantity, it can have a greater resistance to corrosion. If the magnesium or amount of magnesium is at a high rate, that is around 50%, the, the alloy becomes brittle and then the alloy becomes susceptible to the corrosion. It may get attacked with the corrosion. It may get uh, corrodes, you can say. If the magnesium quantity is uh, greater at a greater percent, around 50% of magnesium is present in that metal, then uh, it is having more chances of getting corroded. These are all the properties of magnesium. Coming to its applications, what are its applications? This, because of its lightweight, as I told, because of its lightweight and good mechanical characteristics, it is mainly used for the aircraft. In the, it is mainly used for making aircraft components and automobile components. These are all the applications of magnesium. Hope you have understood the properties and uses of uh, magnesium. Coming to the next one, that is hindelium. What is this hindelium? Hindelium is also an aluminium alloy which is made up of magnesium and small quantities of chromium. A mixture of aluminium, magnesium and small quantities of chromium gives you out hindelium. Where it is going to be used? It is used in the manufacturing of anodized utensils. Okay, It is used in making some utensils which are going to be used in daily life. Uh, you might have seen your aluminium uh, utensils in your kitchen. Uh, for this, that is made up of hindelium. You might have heard this uh, word hindelium. Hindelium patre kodi and keli pera. Okay, that is hindelium utensils. That is about the aluminium alloys. Let us briefly discuss about the different types of aluminium alloys. Duralium, you can have this in the, uh, this uh, slide. Duralium, Y alloy, magnesium, hindelium. Duralium is made up of 4% carbon. Sorry, 4% copper, 0.5% manganese, 0.5% magnesium and remaining aluminium. Y alloy is 2% copper, 1% nickel and some 0.5% of magnesium and the remaining amount is aluminium. And in the magnesium, 2 to 10% of around 20%, 5 to 10% of magnesium and the remaining is aluminium. And in the, in the hindelium, magnesium and small quantity of chromium and some and the base metal is aluminium. Isn't it? So this is the composition of different alloys and they are having some their own properties and applications. Already we have discussed that one. Uh, that is about this aluminium alloy. Hope you have understood the aluminium alloy. These are the four different forms of aluminium and the composition of each aluminium alloy and the properties and use applications of each aluminium alloy. Hope you have understood this one. Next we will move on to the next uh, type of alloy that is steel alloys. Yes, as the aluminium altered to aluminium alloys, in the same way here the steel can be altered to steel alloys. Depending on their use, depending on their uh, on their need, they are going to make this steel alloys. What are these steel alloys? Steels are made, alloys, steel alloys are made by combining carbon steel with one or more several alloying elements. It may be manganese, silicon, nickel, titanium, copper, chromium and aluminium. All these are alloying elements and here the base metal is steel. Carbon steel is the base metal. All these uh, other uh, metals are alloying elements, alloying metals you can say. What is the most important desired change what you have in the steel alloy? 
because with the help of allowing the these elements you are going you are able to get the increased hardenability increased resistance of corrosion increased resistance to corrosion and then retention of hardness and strength all these three properties will be able to occur when you are allowing the steel with different alloying elements which are the different types of steel alloys there are seven important different types of steel alloys in the aluminium alloys there are four different types of aluminium alloys in the steel alloys the steel alloys you have seven different types of steel alloys steel alloys the first one is stainless steel nickel steel invar steel vanadium steel tungsten steel manganese steel molybdenum steel and the composition also you can see in this slide only the stainless steel in the stainless steel you are having chromium of 20 to 20 percent these are the main important composition and there are some other alloying elements also which combines with this main composition we will be learning uh, in detail about the each steel alloy before i go to this what is this steel uh, steel alloys the steel alloys are generally contain generally contains 10 to 20 percent of chromium as its main alloying element what are its advantages as i told already mm. is yes, uh, stainless steel we'll be learning in detail about each steel alloys the first one is stainless steel the stainless steel the composition of stainless steel here is it contains 10 to 20% of chromium as its main alloying element with other some of the uh, elements what are its properties it is having high resistance to corrosion and then uh, with 11% of chromium steel is about 200 times more resistant to corrosion than the mild steel that means if you are mixing 11% of chromium in the mild steel and making a stainless steel with that with the help of that chromium what will happen it is having 200 times more resistance to the corrosion that is the advantage of stainless steel and they are very hard and tough and have less and high they have high elastic and ultimate strength and they are, they are having resistance to acids and they are having resistance to corrosion these are all the properties of stainless steel what are its uses it is used for making ball bearings dies crushing machines kitchen utensils stainless steels you might have seen the boxes and uh, plates and all are made up of stainless steel i hope you have understood the properties and uses of for stainless steel next we will move on to the next type of steel alloy that is nickel steel what is this nickel steel in this nickel steel the nickel is present around 3.5% of nickel is there uh, and then these nickel alloys are readily welded they can easily welded by any of the methods by gas method or arc method that, that means it can be totally easily welded easily forged easily machined easily casted and it can be easily formed the what are its properties it is more elastic it has high tensile strength it is less brittle than the mild steel it improves hardness and ductility these are all the advantages of nickel steel but it is having some of the disadvantages also what is that nickel steel with with the with cannot withstand high temperatures about 600 degree of fahrenheit of temperature cannot be withstanded by nickel steel uh, at that temperature what will happen it oxidizes very the it may corrodes it may the, the steel may gets corrodes at high temperatures and also they are having less they have more corrosion as compared to steel they are having less resistance to uh, corrosion you can say that is about this nickel steel what are its uses where it is going to be used nickel steel is used for making uh, storage cylinders for liquefied gases and for the uh, for, uh, for other some other low temperature applications and it is also used for making heavy forging turbine blades high highly stressed screws bolts and nuts can be made with the help of nickel steel and it is also used for making shafts gates propeller shafts and keys and this nickel steel is also may used for making uh, parts of uh, automobiles and parts of aircraft industries these are all the uses of nickel steel hope you have understood the properties and uses of nickel steel alloy 
next we move on to the next type of steel alloy that is invar steel alloys what are this invar steel alloys the composition here is nickel is having 30 to 40% of nickel yes and here in this invar steel alloy it is a iron based alloy in which iron is here the iron is the base element and in invar steel consists of 0.01 to 0.1% of carbon and it has uh, the exhibit a coefficient of thermal expansion that is close to 0 uh, coming to its applications where it is used it is used in the clocks and some some of the scientific instruments and thermostats and other materials that require consistent monitoring systems those are all the uses of invar steel steel the next one is vanadium steel alloy what is its composition its composition it consists of 0.12 to so 2% of vanadium coming to its properties it is very strong inductor ductile it is capable of resisting shocks it has high tensile strength uh, it has high resistance to uh, corrosion and it is more effective alloy for increasing the strength of reinforcing bars which is used in the construction purpose and this vanadium based alloys could not be used in the pressurized water water cooled system because of it excessive corrosion the disadvantage what you have with this vanadium steel alloy is it is having less resistance to corrosion coming to its uses it is used uh, it is widely used in the like uh, making crankshafts and then connecting rods to the chassis of many cars and trucks and making steel pipes spanners locomotive casings all these are the applications of vanadium steel hope you understood this vanadium steel the next one is uh, tungsten steel alloy the tungsten steel alloy this tungsten steel alloy the composition it consists of 14 to 20 percent of tungsten steel its properties are it is hard and it can maintain its cutting power at high temperature and it is also sometimes known as high speed steel you can also name it this as high speed steel uh, this alloy is having it has it as it has high cutting hardness and resistance to abrasion it is named as high steel high speed steel these are the properties of tungsten steel alloy its applications where it is used it is used uh, in making drills it is used for making drills lath tools cutters uh, and so on Distru hope you understood the tungsten steel the next uh, type of steel is manganese steel the manganese steel the manganese is 12 to 15 percent of manganese is present and where it is going to be used and it is used for heavy earth moving equipments um, before i go to the uses what are its properties it is uh, hard and strong it possesses uh, this manganese steel possesses fair ductility and it is having excellent resistance to corrosion with abrasion and it has low efficient or coefficient of expansion these are the properties of uh, manganese steels that is it is ha it is having high strength and hard and it is having uh, a ductility property that is uh, it possesses a fair ductility here if the manganese content decreases the ductility and weldability uh, to decreases to a lesser extent than this increase in carbon content it, it depends on the manganese content these are all the properties of manganese steel coming to its uses where it is used it is used uh, it is used for points and switches in railway crossings spring gears and and the jaws of crushers and then uh, rollers heavy earth mining equipments can also be made with the help of this manganese steel that is about this manganese steel and the next one is molybdenum steel in the molybdenum steel uh, the composition is around the molybdenum is consists of 0.15 to 0.3 three percent of molybdenum uh, this is hard material hard metal and less brittle it offers better resistance to impact and shock it maintains its properties at even at high temperatures 
and this can be easily welded. These are all the properties of molybdenum steel. Coming to its uses, where it is used, it is used. Uh, this is used. This alloy is used for making axles, springs, bolts, scrapper build, blades, and so on. These are all the uses of molybdenum steel. Hope you have understood the molybdenum steel. Totally, there are seven different types of uh, stainless steels. Uh, I think you might have understood this table: the stainless steel, nickel steel, invar steel, vanadium steel, tungsten steel, manganese steel, and molybdenum steel. Thank you so much for this uh, session. For watching this session, if you have any queries, you can write it to write this to us. Uh, we may solve. We may we may help you to come out with that uh, queries. Thank you so much.